WPF Therapy is a charity. We've been around for about 40 years. Uh, we were set up originally to provide therapy for people at low cost. A lot of people could benefit from therapy. It wasn't readily available through the NHS. Uh, and Bill Kyle, a Methodist minister who did a lot of pastoral work in London, recognized that uh, he could do his work much more effectively if he knew about psychotherapy and had a, a therapy training. So uh, the charity was set up both to train people to become therapists and to provide low-cost therapy. How we think about how we make things, who we are, any of these matters are things that engage us. But it has to be also said that in this institution, because we live in this slightly strange world of portraits uh, in which we're actually obsessed, um, not really by what people look like, um, but obsessed by what they are and who they are. We've got 26 uh, centres nationally. Some of them provide training. All of them provide low-cost therapy to adults, people over 18. But as I say, we feel that in thinking about portraiture, we're thinking about people all of the time and how that thinking might take place and the processes behind it is something we're incredibly keen to explore. There has been a tradition of strong interest um, between psychoanalysts and um, the arts and, and creativity. This evening, we have Sir Andrew Motion, Professor of Creative Writing at Royal College, <coughs> University of London, author of many books of wonderful poems. And we also have Susie Orbach, very distinguished psychotherapist and writer, founder of the Therapy Centre in 1976. So I think without any further ado, I'll invite Joan and Susie and Andrew to have their conversation. Thank you very much. And there's a very strong interest in understanding what art's about, what the motives of, uh, of artists are in, in producing the work that they do. And psychoanalysis has had quite a lot to say about that over a long period of time. I think that one of the fears that a lot of patients or a lot of people coming into therapy is that they will lose that magic. Whereas my experience of people coming, whether they're actors or carpenters or set designers or choreographers, whatever, writers, is they really manage their fear much better doesn't mean it goes away. Mm. And they, their fear of whatever. Mm. And they enter into their own capacities at another level. Mm. And most of the poems that people write at that stage in their writing lives, and perhaps later as well, the first few lines they're clearing their throat. And in the last verse, they're saying, <laughs> just in case you didn't get it, I'm not going to say it again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when you're sitting in creative writing, I said, most of the time, I say, get rid of the beginning. Is that kind of bit in the middle. Um, and we don't have to know everything about the, the kind of pragmatics of it to get it. Trust us, we get it, we'll get it. It's only good, we'll get it eventually. Um, but who says it should be easy? We are uh, complex, interesting creatures. Um, people who uh, support the ideas of, of psychoanalysis um, understand that we have an unconscious mind. So a lot of the time, our motives, the reasons why we do things, um, are opaque. It's not clear to us ourselves why we do what we do. I'm sure our audience has also enjoyed this conversation. Please thank Susie and